The line was exceptional. I've had to the train to get very, very, very proficient. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing New Zealand. You're always adjusting, adapting to conditions, and that's the thing that young players perhaps don't quite realise these days. <laughs> Listening to the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Welcome in to the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Tonight we talk cycling. The launch last night of a new development team, a road cycling development team here in New Zealand. But as much about that development team, the show tonight is about the man who will coach that team, who will still ride with. That team. I don't say for that team because clearly he's not a development rider. But by riding with those on the team, the other riders, I'm sure that he will lead by example and they will learn as much from riding alongside this fella as they will by being coached by him. Gordon McCauley is 41 years young these days. He's a medalist at the Commonwealth Games, but he's been, if you like, an unfashionable rider, not necessarily targeted as one of the uh, the riders most likely to succeed early in his career. He's one of those sports people, though, that continues to defy the odds, that right through his career has proven people wrong. He's got many supporters, don't get me wrong, but he's also had to go out and fight against the odds at different times. He joins us now on the Hyundai High Performance Hour. Gordon, thanks for your time. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your career, but we're also going to talk about this development team, which, of course, is uh, very exciting under your coaching banner, GMC. But let's let's start with, with you as a cyclist. Um, you tell me, if I was being unfair in that introduction, that you are a cyclist who's had, at times, to battle the odds, who's had to go out there and, and prove the critics wrong. Has, has that been a, a bit of a constant for you at times during your career? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I have at times. Uh, the same could be said, though, that you know, a lot of the times I, I've been my own worst enemy and, and let my mouth run away with itself and uh, got myself into a bit of trouble with officialdom and probably made life hard for myself. But you know, if anything, that's made me work harder and and try and prove that you know I was worthy of making teams or, or worthy of winning races. So, so what is it in your makeup that's that's got you into that trouble from time to time? Uh, because you do speak your mind, and you do have strong opinions on the sport that you love so much. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just say it as I see it. If I think somebody's talking rubbish, and I know they're talking rubbish, I'll just tell them. You know, I'm not going to sit around and and listen to somebody blah blah on for hours and hours about something they clearly know nothing about. You know, I've raced a long, long time, and you know, I've I've had a lot of really good and knowledgeable supporters behind me a lot of the time. So, you know, I, I do speak my mind and whether rightly or wrongly, you know, it, it has got me into trouble from time to time. But, you know, uh, all's well that ends well and I'm still still racing. Do you have any regrets uh, at, at that uh, part of your makeup? I mean, if you could go back at different times, and I guess I'm talking politically here and uh, team selection decisions, would you would you do anything differently if you had your time again? Uh, not, not in terms of racing for New Zealand. You know, I think my levels are common enough games level rider. I, I don't think I'm, I'm that next level. I don't think I'm, I'm an Olympian. Um, perhaps an Olympian to finish, but that's not why you go to the Olympics. I race to win and I race to, to succeed and I, I wouldn't really want to go to Athens or Beijing or Rio or anywhere like that and, and just be packed so I want to go there and race or race to help the team so, so yeah in, in terms of of making national selections I, you know I don't think I've, I've got any regrets I, I've aimed for four Commonwealth Games and made four Commonwealth Games perhaps there's a couple of opportunities I, I let slip by in terms of being a professional rider but you know you can't look back on your life and say you know I've done this wrong or, or done that wrong hindsight's a wonderful thing so you know for me it's always about looking forward and, and what I can do right. Gordon McCauley our guest on the Hyundai High Performance Hour as we talk about his career but also we'll talk tonight about this new partnership with uh, Avanti Plus the network of stores around New Zealand and this uh, GMC development team GMC of course is the uh, uh, the uh, well it's the it's the trademark it's the brand isn't it Gordon for your coaching uh, program 
Yeah, I think there's a big car company have tried to steal it from me. <laughs> but, uh, they, uh, they, they've heard of you, mate. They don't want that fight. <laughs> So we're, let's go back if we can, and we are just turning back the pages a little bit here, mate. Where, where did it start for you as a competitive cyclist? Was it always there for you as a young kid? No, uh, I mean, essentially I was brought up by, I guess, foster grandparents in Dunedin. My, my parents brought up when I was fairly young, and I was, I was brought up by these people in Dunedin, and their family were racers. And all through the house there were little trophies and, and pictures and things, and it, it all happened one day at school. I was a bit of an overweight teenager and, and a notice come around school asking if somebody wanted to race a team time trial on the weekend. So I signed up, went back, told my granddad that I'd signed up for this. So he pulled the mud guards off my bike and put on some toe clips and, and I showed up. And I, I got dropped by the team as soon as the race started and, and rode the whole way by myself. But you know, pretty much from that day I was hooked because you know I don't like not succeeding at something so the hard work started you're also pretty fearless and there's a fella sitting in the studio with me my co-host jason ryan who who knows what it is gordon to be in a lead vehicle on a bike race and all he can see in his mirrors is gordon mccauley doing about 95 kilometers an hour going downhill and coming up as a corner and it has a road sign on it saying 85 kilometers an hour for this corner so uh he never forgets that uh, do you have to be a bit fearless well it comes from a lack of being able to climb hills fast you have to descend them fast to catch back up again so <laughs> what, what you lack in some areas you have to make up in others uh, i guess i'm i'm reasonably fearless and and most of the good elite riders around the world are fearless but you know i'm nothing compared to, to some of the europeans I, i've raced in italy and gone over some of the, you know, the alpine passes with those guys, and I've been at the back of the pack, just absolutely terrified. Those guys descend so fast; it's not funny. And and that perspective is a bit frightening, Jason. You'll you'll never forget that, will you? The the sight of Macaulay, you know, filling up your mirrors as you approach this corner and thought, "Hello, am I going to make the corner?" Yeah, well, I, I had concerns that the little car was and wouldn't handle the road, <laughs> but. Uh, it was fair to say it was a fairly long descent, but I was travelling quite a wee way ahead to start with, and about three corners later he was within 50 metres of the car. So it was uh, hang on for dear life, I must say, in the little car I was in. But I managed to get down before him, but only just. Yeah, yeah. you put the frighteners on the big man, uh, Gordon. Uh, so in terms of that, uh, that rather inauspicious start then as that teenager riding off the back of a race, um, how quickly did you... You know, you say you were very keen, hooked straight away, but how quickly did it get serious? When did you uh, not only ditch the mud guards but ditch that bike and get a decent set of wheels? Well, I mean, truthfully, I, I tried pretty hard from right from then. You know, the next race I rode was a, actually a handicap race. It was a, on a handicap system, and I had a 24-minute head start on the field and, and managed to win that one, so then I was really hooked. Uh, I guess I was, a, I was a pretty slow developer as a kid. I, you know, I didn't particularly pick up any sports really well. I, I actually wanted to be a pro soccer player and play for Chelsea, but I was the only goalkeeper in the school that couldn't actually jump up and, and reach the crossbar. So <laughs> that, that was that was pretty much kind of crucial, you know, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, it just was was down to hard work, and in the late early 90, late eighties, early nineties. Uh, I rode in the Otago Junior Team Time Trial Team in Wanganui, and we won. And uh, that gave me a bit of confidence. And then uh, then I started working full-time, discovered girls and cars. So um, I kept training, but trained after work at night and, and spent a lot of the weekends in the pub, like most New Zealand sports people do. So then I never really got serious till I was 24. And then uh, ditched the cars, Pretty much ditched the girls and uh, and started training properly. And that year, I won the Tour of Southland, so that gave me the confidence mm. to, to really push, push on. Yeah, really signalled that you'd uh, you'd arrived at that top level. Um, so the cycling, the physiology, the physical aspect of it is one thing, but uh, you are you are renowned for this hard nosed attitude, and it, and it certainly comes through with the philosophies by, by which you coach uh, cyclists and by which this GMC development road team will be run 
Who taught you those values? Where did they come from? I, I think they're a little bit self-imposed. You know, there, there is an element of that. I'm from Dunedin originally, and anybody that's experienced uh, riding a bike down there in the winter, it's pretty cold. So now that I live in Auckland, the winters here, are, to be honest, they're pretty soft. They're pretty warm. And, you know, an example of it would be tonight. We had a, a 50K training session tonight booked in with a bunch of people that I coach and you know it was pouring down with rain and everybody showed up because they knew I'd be there and they knew they'd be in trouble if if they didn't show yeah there's a bit of the almost the Titchens sort of philosophy there that uh, um, it, it, it's it's respect isn't it there's a little bit of fear in there Gordon would you allow for that <laughs> To, to be honest, I think we all just want to beat the coach, and, <laughs> and I won't have it. <laughs> so any opportunity to come and ride with me and try and give me a hiding is a good opportunity. So, um, you know, but that keeps me going as well. You know, if I'm the benchmark and, and I'm the one they're trying to beat, if that helps people improve, well, well and good. Mm. Who, who were the early mentors for you? Who, who were the coaches that, uh, you know, that, that perhaps... Uh, you, and, and, and as with most sports people in different sports through their careers, they take a little bit from a coach here, a little bit from another coach there. Who were the mentors that, uh, that have contributed to your, your uh, philosophies now? Well, my, my very first coach was actually one of your, uh, one of your speakers on air, Dale Woodford's father, Sid. So, so he coached me when I was a really young fella. Then, a, then it would have been Robbie Vandaloo, who's an Otago Cycling stalwart down there, and he uh, he was a pretty good rider in his era. So he looked after me a lot, not not just in coaching, but actually taught me a lot about life. Taught me not to be such a little turd when I was being a smart mouth, and you know taught me some pretty good values. And then then I guess my first real coach, as such, would have been Terry Jide, and you know he's a he's a former national national track coach and and he coached me to my first south on tour win what were you best at or indeed has, has it changed through your career uh were you good in a team environment or were you you know renowned as the uh the individual perhaps uh you know individual pursuit on the road and uh you know the guy who would be uh there pushing on his own regardless of assistance from teammates making a break off the front what what, what do you think you'll be seen as well, I, I guess for the, the first half to three quarters of my my career, I, I was a bit more of an individual rider. You know, I'd prefer to ride for a small team and be the leader than ride for a big team and work for somebody else. So so I guess in, in that perspective, I, I, I guess being truthful, I, I prefer to ride for myself and have the team ride for me. And, you know, there are a lot of riders around similar to that. In the last five or six years, I actually get a lot of pride out of helping other people win races. But, you know, there's still a, a selfish element to it, I guess. You know, if I'm working hard on the front, for example, for my, my team leader down in Tour of Southland this year, Sam Lindsay, I want to pull the longest, hardest turns. You know, I still want to be the best worker in the field. So, you know, I guess first three quarters of the career would have been a an individual I think the the last part of my career now, I've been far more of a team player. And and highlight for you, I mean, is it the medal in Melbourne? That, that's my biggest highlight. That absolutely, absolutely, that is. I think really, there was there was only three people that believed I could do it, and that was myself, my wife, and the guy that took over to to coach me when I got hit by the car three months out from it, Doug Barton in the Cargill. I couldn't ride the road. Because I couldn't deal with the the pain from from the broken wrist, so so Doug wrote me an indoor erg program. I'd never really used the erg before, and uh, and he believed from the numbers I was putting out that I could medal. So, you know, uh, that would definitely be the biggest highlight for me. What what was your headspace going into that uh, the individual time trial in Melbourne at the Commonwealth Games, and you won bronze? What? Can you recall what your headspace was? Was was there an element at all, Gordon, of this is it? This is what all of the hard work of twenty twenty five years has been all about. Was it was it that big for you, or was it just another race? It was sort of funny. The first two Commonwealths I rode, KL and Manchester, I I didn't ride very well, to be honest. I I think I was just full of nerves and and. I, perhaps I just hadn't quite prepared properly for them. 
Melbourne, I prepared properly. You know, I dotted all the I's, I crossed all the T's. I never had a single drop of beer for the whole year before it. My diet was impeccable. I did every single training ride that was asked of me. I was at race weight. I'd gone to the point of taking my bike into the bike shop, changing bolts out to titanium bolts to, to lighten the bike, cutting bits off here and there that I could to make the bike more aero. So every single thing I could have done, I'd done. And I even went to the point of not wearing the New Zealand team helmet because I was used to wearing my own helmet. So I wore that. So I knew I'd done every single thing that I needed to do. I knew every single rider in the field. I knew what they'd done on the lead up. I knew that the former under-23 world time trial champion that should have been a favourite had dropped six kilos to climb the mountains in Tour of Langkawi, hence losing power in a time trial. So, you know, I'd done my homework. I knew I couldn't win because I, I knew the winner but I knew potentially I could get silver or bronze, and, and that's the way that it panned out. So, I mean, was this, in a way, you didn't win gold, but in a way, was this your perfect storm? Was was this your perfect day, looking back through your career? Everything you've just described, really, it sounds like the culmination of of, of the lessons learned, the coaching, the the advice, the um, pushing yourself to the limits, That that all of that, the culmination of all of that, came through on that day in Melbourne? Yeah, I I guess everything just went perfectly. You know, I've had races before where everything that can go wrong will go wrong, punctures, broken chains, all sorts of things. You know, for Melbourne, I flew myself. I wasn't even on the long list to start with. So I flew myself to Melbourne. I pre-rode the course. I checked out the course. I knew the times that I'd have to do to win a medal. I knew that I'd have to break 50 minutes to win a medal. Only the three medalists broke 50 minutes for 40K. You know, my, my wife come over with me. She supported me. She was there looking after me. We even managed to, to get her an accreditation so she could look after me while I was warming up, like we'd done on all the, the previous warm-up time trials that I'd done, done over here. So, you know, it, everything that could go right went right. You know, there, there, are, there are riders in that field with a load more talent than me one Chris Froome was racing that day and he, he didn't get a medal. You know, and what could go right went right. And, you know, I had great sponsors as well. So, you know, I, I guess in a way you're right. You know, it, everything that I worked for come to fruition on that day. Fantastic stuff. When we come back, we'll uh, continue our chat with Gordon McCauley. We'll turn our attention to the here and now, and that is this uh, GMC development team, a road cycling team that uh, Gordon has uh, put on the road uh, with the assistance of a number of partners, but in particular uh, at the launch last night, Avanti Plus, a uh, New Zealand brand. And this is, the, I think, the fantastic part of this, that you've got an iconic New Zealand rider. With, with this great philosophy and the attitude that we've just heard about, uh, combining with the uh, New Zealand engineering. And, and I just think there's something uh, intrinsically good about that partnership. So we'll talk more about that. And Del Woodford will join us to talk about the machinery, the bikes that uh, the uh, GMC development team will ride. Father Christmas, old Saint Nick, Santa Claus. He's known by many names across the globe. But did you know our Santi was a loud snorer? Then he saw the team at Alpers Dental, who helped him with this common problem. Now Santa and Mrs. Claus can enjoy the gift of a good night's sleep this Christmas, thanks to Alpers Dental. Sleep soundly like Santa these holidays. Visit alpers.co.nz. Grab yourself a better deal. Get six months half price when you switch your business to a Vodafone office net package on a 24-month term. These great value packages include broadband, landline and 500 anywhere calling minutes. And if your mobiles are with Vodafone, you'll also get free calling between your company landlines and mobiles. Don't miss this awesome half price deal. Call 0508 112 112 by 30 November. Only on the Supernet. Six months half price on monthly plan charges. For full term, see vodafone.co.nz forward slash office net. When you've got to last the distance, peak fuel will sustain. Training, racing, endurance. Maximising your performance and taste experience. Gels, powders, performance bars and cookies. Give your body what it needs. Peak Fuel proudly supporting the Lake Topo Cycle Challenge. 
Sold at all Abadi Plus stores nationwide. See peakfuel.co.nz for more. The Hyundai High Performance Hour with Andrew Dewhurst. Proudly brought to you by Hyundai New Zealand. Yes, welcome into the show. Our guest on the show is uh, Gordon McCauley. Won the bronze in the individual time trial at the 2006 Melbourne Commonwealth Games. Has won, uh, well, you just got to look through the CV and there are uh, podium placings, but first placings right through the career from the Tour of Southland. Uh, to uh, uh, stage wins and titles at the likes of the uh, the, uh, the Tour of Wellington, um, Tour de Vineyards, uh, so many New Zealand events that he's dominated, national championships, and also has written professionally very successfully overseas through uh, North America and at times Europe. Uh, he's on the show with us tonight for his career uh, highlights, but also because uh, last night at Shepherd Industries, which is the parent company, You'll know the brand as Avanti Plus, Avanti Bikes. They also sell Scott Bikes through their Avanti Plus stores. But to the partnership launched last night and the new GMC development team, a road cycling development team, was launched last night. Gordon is in that team, but he's in there as coach. But he will also ride alongside those in the team. But uh, joining us is a man that was there last night emceeing the gig, and that is uh, Del Woodford. G'day, Del. Hey, good day, Andrew. How are you? I'm very well indeed, and uh, we'll keep Gordon online here as well so that we can uh, conference the call. Um, Del, from an Avanti point of view, what what did the team at, at Shepherds at Avanti Plus, what, what did you see in Gordon McCauley? Because this is not a new relationship, is it? No, it's not a new relationship, and we've, we've had a, a, a you know a relationship with Gordon for, for many years. Uh, his first tour of Southland was actually won on a on an Avanti bike, an early model Avanti bike. He was on the Subway Avanti team, and he was looked after a little bit through the Avanti Plus stores, particularly uh, in, in Waipuna and out in out in Henderson at, at Avanti Plus Waitakere. So he's had a good association uh, with the company and with the bike brand. And, uh, you know, he's a character. He loves cycling. He's passionate about cycling. And, and so, uh, you know, the people at Avanti, they... they make great bikes but they're not just the company that sits there and makes and design bikes and markets bikes andrew as you well know we all get out there and ride bikes so to have someone uh like gordon who, who shares the same passion about cycling uh, endorsing the brand and bringing some young people through and that's what's really important and the thing that was commented about a lot today uh, in its shepherd industries was the the, you know, the families that were there, you know, Holly White with, with her dad and a, a mum and a brother there, you know, someone who's won a Oceana title, uh, there, the passion and the support that these people are giving their kids is just absolutely fantastic. And to have someone mentoring them like Gordon to, to share uh, his experiences and his passion, help them develop their careers, it's just a great fit. Gordon, is that important to you as well, being being a part of uh, an organisation and partnering with uh, Avanti Plus, who, who equally they share that passion and uh, that you can get in there and uh, talk uh, cycling with real people, that it's not just a brand or a sticker on the bike? Yeah, well, for me, what, what's exciting about it is I can just go and pop into the office and say this is what we found with the bike, this is what we found with the helmet, you know, this is great, we, can we tweak this for next year's edition? You know, there's, there's no other bike brand in New Zealand I can do that with. You know, they're, they're a really respectable brand, and, you know, one of the designers, Stephen James, I raced with him when we were young. You know, so I can go in and, and see SJA and say, this, this bit works really great, you know, and... Mm. And you know, and you know, it might be a pat on the back to him, but that's good because you know we're out there as well, testing the bikes, testing them in the rain, testing their handling, testing them in a sprint. So you know, for me, it's a perfect partnership. So, in in terms of the the machinery, the bikes themselves, Dell, what will this uh, GMC development team be riding? Well, they they have the choice uh, of of bikes from from Avani Plus, but they've chosen to Gordon himself rides the Avani Corsa SL, which is due to arrive in the country any day. So, you know, they'll be available uh, not just to the team, but to the public, but also the other members of the Gordon McCauley, you know, coaching, coaching group. Um, the, the most of the development team have chosen to ride the Avani Corsa DR, which is the drag reduction bike. It's modelled off the Chrono Evo, the time trial bikes, the bike we've seen the team has developed from right from the days of Sarah Alma's success at the Olympics and the work towards a more aerodynamic time trial bike. And 
as Stephen mentioned last night in the presentation to, to the team and those that were there, they realised that there was such a advantages to be made in, in road bikes for people that like to attack right off the front, people like Gordon or people that want to do a time trial or be a triathlete but still have an everyday road bike and don't want to have two bikes. So they went about designing uh, an aerodynamic road bike, Andrew, and that's what they've got. And that's what most of the team uh, ha- have chosen to ride. And it's a bike that anyone can walk into the store and buy. They're Altegra equipped, which is the second from the top of the range in the Shimano group set. But you can walk into the store and buy a bike like that for around $4,500. So they're not, they're not kids wanting to ride you know, $15,000, $20,000 bikes. They're, they're, bikes, they're getting results on bikes that, that are affordable to the masses. Mm, good stuff. Dell, appreciate your time uh, on the show tonight. Uh, Del Woodford with us from Avanti Plus, who are uh, partnering with this uh, GMC development team and providing them with the uh, the bikes, but also the network of support as well through the Avanti Plus dealerships. Uh, Gordon, in terms of the team, let's let's have a look at who this who's in this team, and uh, they range um, in age, dare I say, from your good self uh, down to uh, uh, Corey Cannings, Oliver Young, Holly White's uh, three of them at sixteen years of age. Richard Johnston, uh, twenty six. Logan Mort at twenty five. I think Logan also helps you on the coaching side of things. And Jack Sowry at nineteen. Devon Hiley is the other there, uh, young Devon. She's 18 years of age. So it is primarily young, uh, the teenagers in there. But I'm interested in, in in those that are sort of mid-20s, and Richard's a good example of that, because you yourself said that you didn't really get serious. You won your first major tour at, what, 25, 26 years of age. So is this an opportunity for, for the late bloomers just as it is for the, the young starlets? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the point of having a development team. You know, who's to say a, a rider in his mid to late 20s isn't developing? You know, primarily we are targeting the younger under 19 riders, but Richard, in the last six months since I've been coaching him, has, has come on in huge leaps and bounds. He, he's, he was literally what we, what we call in local club racing a D grade rider, and he's now racing A grade, you know, and that's in six months. And the guy is a full time policeman. So, you know, he trains and at crazy hours and, and you know, trains when he can. And he's made these, these huge gains just through total commitment to being a good bike racer. So why shouldn't somebody like him have the opportunity to, to be looked after at races and have great sponsors and learn? So, so is this? Uh, I mean, what, what's the motivation behind this team? Let's let's get to the guts of it. Is uh, you know, are you looking to take over uh, the role of Bike NZ here, or are you looking to promote riders into national teams? What's the goal? It's certainly not to take over the role of Bike NZ, but Bike NZ do a great job, and primarily the funding that that comes from High Performance Sport New Zealand is is targeted at Olympic and World Championship medals. So, so there's a lot of focus on the track because that's the best avenue to get those medals. Well, I'd like to think we can collaborate with Bike NZ. You know, the, they, they already do a good job with their under-17 national development program and under-19 national mm-hmm. development program. So, so why not have another alternative avenue? You know, every other country in the world, there's, you know, there's 30 or 40 junior teams. We don't have any. So why I figured I might as well just start one. Somebody's got to get the ball rolling. Let's get it rolling. Let's let's teach kids how to race in a team, how to respect their sponsors, and you know how to improve on a bike. And you know the more of my riders that can ride for New Zealand, the better it is. That there's no better accolade for a coach than a rider being selected to represent his country. Gordon McCauley, our guest on the Hyundai High Performance Hour as we talk about his career and the uh, launch of this GMC development team. Uh, all of the details, by the way, you can find at gmccoaching.com, gmccoaching.com, uh, the uh, the release uh, announcing the team, but also the philosophy behind the team. Back in a moment with more from Gordon. If you've got a question, more than happy to take your call or your text on 5009 as we continue to talk with Gordon McCauley through until 10 o'clock. Radio Sport has the HRV T20. That's a beautiful ball. He's out. Auckland Aces, Wellington Firebirds. Friday night at 710. What do I like about Pupuki Golf Club? I can play nine holes on my lunch break and the boss has no idea. I leave the office before 12, tee off, and back in the city by 3. 
to be fair, that is a really good day on the green, but it does happen sometimes. Pupuki Golf Club, just 10 minutes from the city, boasting spectacular views and a challenging course. They're now offering nine hole memberships. On a bad round, I just tell them I had meetings back to back. Here. Same time, play nine. Pupukigolf.co.nz. Imagine if Super Fences had been in England in 1982. Any ideas for an album name? I'm not sure about the wall. I say we go with Super Fence. All in all, it's just a wire in the fence. Genius. Guaranteed number one. For temporary fencing for your construction or building site, Super Fence is number one. And they supply Super Loose, so your building site and your throne are safe. They can even put it all in one invoice. Super. Superfence.co.nz. Always at your convenience. Willie Mason. Newcastle Knights coming to win the Auckland Nines. Robbie Farah. NRL Auckland Nines. I'm coming and us Tigers want to win it. Anthony Watmo. At Manly, we're looking to win. And we're going to bring our best side and I can't wait to play. The Dick Smith NRL Auckland Nines 2014. New Zealand's biggest summer event. And a great Christmas gift for your family and friends. Get a two-day pass from $69 for this knockout tournament. Featuring all 16 NRL clubs. The Dick Smith NRL Auckland Nines 2014. Eden Park, Feb 15 and 16. Tickets at Ticketek. Hi there, I'm Kento, and I'm playing Santa this year. Ho, ho, ho! I know I'm not very convincing without a beard or hat, but I do have a whole lot of Holson Top 10 toys to give away this week during our afternoon programme. So cheers to Holson. For details, get to radiosport.co.nz. When you were a kid, coming seventh was just fine and dandy. But now you're a ruthless grown-up selling your home. So settle for nothing less than the number one source of property buyers in NZ. Okay? Make sure your realtor has your listing on Trade Me Property, the best place to sell your place. Hyundai High Performance Hour with Andrew Dewhurst. Proudly brought to you by Hyundai New Zealand. Talking with our guest Gordon McCauley and talking cycling, the launch of this new GMC development team. Uh, all of the details at gmccoaching.com. Uh, Gordon, the um, the team itself, that, that primarily young, but uh, you're still going to ride as well. What... What is there to learn? I mean, apart from training and understanding the physiology and how far you can push yourself, what, 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 what are the, what's the art of road riding? What are the different things you teach these uh, youngsters especially? A lot of it is, is how to race as a team. You know, it might just look like in a bike race, the one that pedals the fastest wins. But you need to use your team efficiently to win races. And so, you know, it's teaching them how to race as a team some of it is just teaching them how to look after their sponsors. You know, I've made the mistake in years gone by, uh, you know, saying stupid things in public. You know, if I've had a puncture and the tire hasn't been right, I've, I've, you know, run my mouth and got myself in trouble. It's teaching these guys and girls how to do things correctly. I, I've made the mistake so they don't have to. So, you know, it's teaching them the, the do's and don'ts of bike riding, how to do things correctly. And then, you know, if they're up to it, it's speaking for them with an overseas team and trying to place them in a professional team. So in order to be on this team, what what are the qualities? What have these uh, other riders, and again, I'll focus on the, the teenagers, but the others as well, what, what have they had to uh, convince you of in order to be named on this team? I mean, first and foremost, there has to be a passion for bike racing. You know, the I, I listen to, to what people are saying. You know, when we do our, our GMC group rides with the whole group, I listen to what people are saying. I listen to the ones that are watching the Tour de France and what's happening in the races overseas. There has to be a passion to be a bike racer. You know, you have to be passionate about bike racing to go for a four-hour ride in pouring rain. It, it's no fun. So you have to really want to do it. Then there has to be a, a willingness to complete the training that's there. You know, if if you complete three of the, the seven days that I've set you in training, well, you know, that's not really willingness to complete the training. I want to see seven out of seven days or a very good excuse for not doing it. And and then there's also potential, for me, longevity in cycling. There's a, there's a lot of youngsters out there that, that race all the schools racing when that's on. As soon as the schools racing's finished, they're gone. They leave the sport. These are, these are youngsters that want to go and club race out at counties every weekend or, or in the Masterton Club or, or wherever they happen to live. They want to go and race their bikes. And most importantly, that's what it is. You know, passion sort of goes hand in hand with that. You've got to be passionate about bike racing. Gordon, how big is the mental side of cycling? I would say 80 90%. If you don't think you can win, you won't. 
you know, I, I've won a lot of races where I certainly haven't been the best bike rider, but I've believed I can win, and I've been smart enough to win. You know, it, I think, I think sport in general, eighty to ninety percent of it is mental. If you're not mentally tough enough to go and do the training, then you won't be physically good enough to win anyway. So, so why bother? On on the mental side, Gordon, you know, favourite topic this week is the sledging that's occurred in the Ashes series. Is that quite prevalent in cycling? <laughs> it depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking from your reaction. You were probably quite good at it. <laughs> uh, um, to be fair to say, I've talked my way to a few wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a sport that lends itself to it, I would think. Yeah, well, I mean, you're saving 30% more energy when you're drafting along behind somebody. So if you can give them a bit of lift every now and again, then, uh, then you know, why not? On the the flip side of the coin, you know, there's a race I rode up here two years ago, and early in the race I was giving a bit of instruction to some of the young guys, and, and one of them said to me, it's all right, we'll look after you, old man. Well, his sledging <laughs> cost him a win because I won. <laughs> I was really angry. <laughs> Yes, yes, I can imagine that. I can imagine that. Um, in terms of uh, you know the, the the team aspect as well, what about what about team orders? I mean, do you do you identify at this this stage of a rider's development within your team? Are uh, are some clearly going to be categorised as climbers, sprinters, workers? You know, are, are they pigeonholed already at this early stage? No, not so much. I mean, you've got young Holly White, who's a great time trialist and pursued her on the track, but she won the under-17 points race title last year, uh, you know, in New Zealand champ. So while she wasn't sprinting for points, she took off and time trialed the whole way. Well, why not ride road races like that? You know, as a really young rider, I don't think anybody is... I think people should basically have a crack at everything. But already you, you start to see riders leaning towards certain disciplines. You know, Devin Hiley is a great time trialist, 15th, and the, the world time trial champs and the juniors this year. So, you know, again, she's a strong time trialist, but she's also the national road race champion. So I, I think at the moment, while riders are still in development, it, it, it's a little, little too early to say. Uh, I think, you know, a, as a rider grows and they develop, that's when you sort of, that's when you get to see sort of what they're made of. And, you know, they have to have a passion for what they're doing again. You know, if, if they don't like track racing, they're never going to be good at it. So so even if they're, they're physically, I mean, gifted for track racing, if they don't like it, they'll just never be good at it. So it, it's a case of what they enjoy doing as well. So what, what's on the calendar? What are, what are the first few events for uh, GMC development team? Well, the first official event will be racing with the, the majority of the team will be the Hub Tour over in the Hawke's Bay. So that clashes with uh, New Zealand Elite Road Championships, and that's a good tester for, for everybody. So you've got the majority of the, the really good riders in New Zealand down in Christchurch racing up that horrible hill, and the rest of us can come and race over in the Hub Tour. And that's another reason why I'm racing. You know, with the the under 19s, I don't get to race with them that often. But in New Zealand, in club racing, your under 19s can race with your veterans, race with your elites. So, you know, I can coach them how to race from from within the heat of the race. And a lot of other countries, you just can't do that. So, five years from now, what's the dream? What would you like to be looking back on? And I know you'll be still looking very much ahead at what's still to come, but. In five years from now, what's the dream for uh, for you and for this team? Oh, I'll probably will have ridden another couple of Commonwealth Games and won some more medals. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't hit my peak yet. I'm in development. I'm on the team. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, I, ideally, for us, we'll have riders have turned professionals, professional, remember where they've come from, and you know we'll be able to recommend new riders to professional teams overseas. You know, and with a bit of with a bit of luck, we'll have a couple of world and Olympic champions as well. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, so let's make that point that this is about the progression of the riders, not of the team. That this will be a development team. You you don't have aspirations to uh, to be riding the tour down under in five years with your own team. Yeah, absolutely not. You know, the biggest races we'll, we'll ever be likely to ride will be the the New Zealand Cycle Classic down in Manawatu. And, you know, perhaps next year or the year after, I'd love to take a team to the Tour of Southland as well. It's my favourite race. 
So, you know, it would be great to take a team there just to to give the youngsters a, a little bit of a taste of what it's like to race with the big boys. Um, so, you know, over the next few years, if we can slowly chip away at it and, and bump the budget up, perhaps we can do a nationwide program. But th- the objective of the team is to be a development team. Right? We have no dreams of racing the Tour de France as a team. You know, we have dreams of, of getting our riders onto teams that ride in the Tour de France. And just finally, um, I know this is vitally important, but uh, can you just describe what goes through your mind when you see a cyclist with a peak still on their helmet, Gordon? <laughs> Actually, Andrew, you're the only person I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> you're special, all right, Gordon? Oh, I feel very special, yes. Um, no, it certainly was a, a lot of fun, uh, you know, on that BDO challenge earlier this year to, uh, and and I can see the, uh, in all seriousness, the the benefit that these riders will get by riding alongside you because, for me, that was my moment. Gordon was to uh, even when when you and the lead group would go flying past, but to know that I'm on the same piece of road, you know, as the likes of yourself and uh, and and legends from days gone by like your, your Jack Swartz. I mean, uh, and that's the beauty of the sport, isn't it? That you can be on the same start line. Yeah, and I mean, even for me, to go for a ride with with Jack Swartz or Brian Fowler is pretty special. You know, you 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 still got a you you still got to respect the good riders of their era. You know, I, I'm I'm lucky enough that I, I've been able to race with the Graham Millers and the and the Brian Fowlers and now with the Greg Hendersons and the Hayden Rolstons. So, you know, I'm spanning eras. So you know, it, it's been pretty cool and, and just to get with get to ride with all those guys it, it is really cool. Good stuff, Gordon. Uh, we wish you all the best with uh, GMC development team and with your uh, your own career. As uh, you've certainly not uh, hung up the uh, the cleats just yet, and uh, no doubt we'll be uh, we'll be seeing you around the traps. But uh, the very best of luck with that team. Thanks, Andrew. Gordon McCauley uh, with us on the Hyundai High Performance Hour. He's a good rooster, isn't he? You, oh, he's a good you, rooster. You, you met him and you know a couple of drinks with him, uh, socialising after a long day's riding while you were driving. Correct. Believe you won every stage. Let's make that point. Mm. You were first across the line every day. But uh, I just I, and I never really knew Gordon. I knew of him, but I never really knew him until again the chance on the BDO challenge to uh, spend a bit of time with him. And he's just so passionate. Loves oh, the sport. That's what comes through in that interview. And I think what he's going to bring to the young people is is the passion and he's take no prisoners attitude. Mm. And that to me is so Kiwi. Um, you know, the old number eight wire, you know, whatever. But he's going to tell it like it is, mm. and he's going to expect them to bleed for, for the cause, yeah. and I think that's great. Yeah, and he certainly told me what he thought <laughs> yep, on more than one occasion. <laughs> you're a wee peak. Uh, but, uh, no, good stuff. Thanks, Gordon. Gordon McCauley with us on the Hyundai High Performance Hour, as well as Adele Woodford. Details of that uh, team, just go to the website. Go to our website, and we'll link to it. So just uh, visit hph.co.nz.